It's whatever pain or frustration or upset or suffering you may have. It's like, it's all internally created. We, we want to say it's the outside world. You triggered me. That's yes. the new famous yeah. You've made this not a safe, safe space. Place. You'll never be able to control the external world to be exactly how you want it to be. You'll never be safe doing that. You have to create the safety inside yourself because you want the answers. Hey everybody, it's Tony Robbins. Welcome to Tony Robbins Podcast. This is a really special and fun episode. This episode, we're gonna take you to one of our inner circle audiences and you're gonna see a, a clip with Sage and myself, basically exploring all the ideas of how you can question, use the power of inquiry, the power of questions to get rid of limiting beliefs. And rather than just talk about it, what we decided to do is you know, bring somebody up on screen and work with them there. So we bring up this young man named Rasmus, I think he's from Denmark, if I remember correctly. And we help him kind of question his limiting beliefs and you see his transformation in real time. So I think you really enjoy it. So thanks for sticking around. Let's just get right to it. Let's start with the power of questions. So I think what I'd like to do now is to finish up, uh, we're going to take one, maybe two questions from some people that are out there. But I thought instead of hearing from me, you should hear my favorite person, my favorite person on earth. Will you welcome my dear Sage Robbins, everybody? Give it up for her, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Inner Circle family. Uh, yes. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you, honey. <laughs> so we're at home here. It's so, so special to be with you in our home. So yes. Thank you for inviting us in your home and you in ours. Uh, so let's take a question. I thought it'd be great. You know, Sage is, uh, well, she's my wife, but that's all you could say I'm partial. She's one of the smartest, most spiritual, most beautiful humans I know on earth. And I've had the privilege of meeting millions. I always tell people, that, uh, you know, I think the gift that God has given me for helping millions of people is I got this woman as my wife and love and uh, partner. Um, so I thought it'd be nice to let her answer some of your and, questions and maybe be on a little bit more on the outside. Go ahead. Thank you, honey. And something I'd love to add to that um, is just one of the beautiful gifts in this space between uh, our love, our relationship is we both uh, have an utter commitment to take responsibility for our suffering. And asking questions, inquiry is a path through that bound, stuck energy of an internal nightmare. We all know what it feels like to be stuck within a trivial belief or a story of mind, and they're running all the time. They're running, and as they run and as we attach to them and believe them, it disconnects us from this moment. It disconnects us from our beloveds. It disconnects us from the beauty of life. And so for myself, I have such, uh, we both, you know, inquiry manifests and, and um, lives in both of us and expresses differently and yet complementary uh, for the simple fact that we're both so hungry uh, for freedom, for inner freedom. And as we inquire, as we dig deeper, as we ask the questions, Tony was said so beautifully earlier about, you know, having mind and heart connected in that coherence. And uh, through questions, if we have a willingness, just a willingness, that's all it takes, a willingness to claim responsibility for our experience of life, a willingness to claim uh, responsibility for our internal suffering. A lot of times, so innocently, mind is looking externally. You know, well, if he changes, if she does this, when she does that, then I'll be happy. And yet, I don't know about you, but I haven't found a human being on the planet that I've been able to change yet. <laughs> through our love, through our love, but not through the expectation or the demand that I need you to behave differently in order for me to feel more comfortable or at ease, or to get over this resistance, that's crazy. That's crazy inside of me if I believe that. And I have, so I can say this because it's human. This is actually where we all meet in this human journey. It transcends every religion, every race. We all meet in this internal experience of mind that can be beautiful and expanded and freeing, or it can be bound and restricting. And so I'm passionate about this as much as this big, beautiful man is. <laughs> and what's so 
Beautiful. In real time, you're going to experience some different questions, questions that I ask, questions that Tony asks, and then as well, uh, questions of a very dear beloved friend of ours, uh, this path called The Work. And you can just simply try them, you know, and all it takes is your own. You wouldn't be here. That's the truth if you didn't have willingness. So Sage mentioned, you know, we have a dear friend named Byron Katie. Yes. And if you haven't picked up some of her books, one of the first books was called The Work. Mm -hmm. And what we have in common is we believe that the only way things change is by inquiry. In other words, things stay the same unless you question them. That's all inquiry is, right? Mm -hmm. But Byron Katie is just a beautiful, beautiful soul. So we really, we're we'll probably do a podcast with her, but you can pick up a book, Loving What Is or The Work. There are lots of great books. But the reason we bring it up is if you're, you know, feeling like a little mm -hmm. overwhelmed by all the questions we're asking here, she has a simple process. She calls it four questions in a turnaround. And I thought I'd just put it in front of you just right now, just at its yes. base. And then we'll take a question, maybe two, Beautiful. if we run out of time here. I'm just looking at the time, to make sure we're supporting you on that too, but we want to go thorough. And it'll give you a structure that you could consider. So let me walk you through it for two seconds. And okay. then I'll let Sage walk somebody through it. And maybe, honey, you'll share your version because we all have our own version. Absolutely. But if you're looking for something that's like the same every time you could go to when you're dealing with a challenge, Byron Katie uh, went through this experience where she literally felt she lost her mind. Mm -hmm. Literally, she was having a mental breakdown. And then she began to realize, I'm only having these feelings because I'm believing these ridiculous thoughts. We all have thoughts. Who here has ever thought, I'm going to kill that son of a gun? Who's ever had this thought in your mind? Anybody out there? Make some noise if you had. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> That created a lot of smiles. <laughs> but you didn't really kill him, right? Because you didn't believe that thought. It's when you believe a thought that it takes control of you. So in order to get beyond that and come up with a new thought, she came up with what she calls four questions and a turnaround. So I'll yeah. give it to you real quick. You can review this later on if you want. You can pick up her book. And it's just one more tool for you. Let me do it for you first. I'll just walk you through it. We'll throw it on the screen for you so you can yeah. see it. So the first question, and by the way, I teach this in some of my business clients. So the first step if you're going to make a change besides getting enough reasons to do it, having a big enough why, enough leverage, is you have to break the pattern. So you got to interrupt the pattern. So if somebody says Susie's a so-and-so, she and it's a derogatory term, or John's a jerk, whatever the term is, <laughs> her first respond is response, or I can't do this, or it's impossible to grow my business, or I don't have the capital, or whatever limiting belief you have. Her first question she asks is, is it true? Now, I go a little bit beyond that because sometimes we say, is it true? People go, yes, it is true. It's just a reflex. So if we'll put it back on the screen, the first question, you, you write down a limiting belief, a limiting emotion, and you say, okay, is it true? Could this be a misinterpretation or misperception about Susie or about myself, about my business, about my resources, about the economy, but whatever it is, do we have all the possible information necessary to know exactly what this means? So do you really know what's going on with Susie? Do you know if she's having an illness? Is there somebody in her family that's being hurt? Can we really know everything to know that Susie's a B, you know, or Johnny's a A, whatever word you want to fill into those components, right? And if you keep asking this question, most of the time, if you're honest, you go, well, no, we don't have all the information to know exactly what's true. It's possible it's a misinterpretation. The moment you see it's possible that a limiting belief is no longer true, that starts to break the pattern. How many follow at least what the intention of that question yeah. is? You do make some noise, so I got you out there. Okay. Awesome. Now that we start to break the pattern, throw it up on the screen for everybody so they see it. Yeah. They can take a picture of it too, so if they want to. Is now we got to get what I call leverage. You know, just make a note if you would. Change is never a matter of ability. Mm. Change is never a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. Meaning, if you said I can't stop smoking, and somebody came up from the mafia and said I got a gun, I'm going to kill all of your children. If you ever touch another cigarette, and we're going to monitor you 24 seven. Yeah, it sounds horrific, but I bet you could stop smoking, right? There's no question about it. It's never can you. It's will you. And the only reason you will is you got strong enough reasons. So that's the general principle that I live. So she has a second question, and it's designed, in my view, to get leverage. And what she asks is, what do you feel when you say Susie's a B or Johnny's an A or whatever word you want to fill in there? What do you feel when you say I can't grow my business or the economy's out of control? What do you feel when you say I can never lose weight? What do you feel? Throw it back on the screen so everybody gets it. What yeah. do you feel? What do you experience? You know, what do you feel like? What When you believe that thought, what does it do to you? And a person may say, I feel pissed off, or I feel frustrated, or I feel overwhelmed, or I feel I, I don't have I, I don't have space in myself to even feel alive. 
And what that does is it makes people find what they don't want. It gives them a reason to change. Third question. Third question you're going to be asking throughout there is you want to annihilate the old belief. And the simple way in which she does this is she asks this question. She says, if that thought never existed, if you never thought Susie was a B, Johnny was an A, that you could never turn your business around, you could never, if you've never had that, that you never thought you weren't sexy, how would you feel if you never had that thought? How would you behave differently if you'd never even had the thought? What would your life experience be like? What would you be like if you didn't have that thought constantly in your mind or in the way or in the way of your progress or your business? And so what this does now is we've gone beyond leverage. Now we're starting to make a change and the person will say, well, I'd, I'd feel happy if I didn't think Susie was mean to me or Johnny was a jerk or whatever. I'd feel like if I didn't think it was impossible to grow my business, I'd probably look for another way or to raise money. So it puts you in a state beyond the limiting belief. And then the turnarounds are simply what we're doing with these first three questions is we're taking those legs, those references that say, I'm not attractive enough. Susie's horrible. I can't grow my business. My, my children won't listen to me. You know, I'm not beautiful enough, whatever. And we're taking the legs out. And the, now that they're out though, we want to make sure they stay out. So she does a turnaround and her turnaround is say the opposite or the antithesis. What's the opposite of it's impossible to grow my business? Well, it's totally possible to grow my business. What's the opposite of, you know, Susie is a terrible person. And that's the second part. You do the opposite. So it can't be done. It can be done. That's a simple turnaround. It must be done. I will do it. Uh, the negative belief, you know, Susie's a bitch, right? Well, no, what's the, let's replace Susie with either they, he, she, or maybe I, uh, that when I'm judging Susie, how do I treat her? Well, I'm a bitch. I'm a bastard. I'm a jerk. Oh my God. That starts to really change the game. And then she asks you to come up with what are three ways that you know that you have been terrible to Susie or what are three ways, you know, you could grow your business or what are three ways. And so it makes you three ways, you know, you're, you're truly attractive. Well, I love people. I love to please people. I whatever. And you come up with three reasons. And now you've built a new belief, a new tabletop. Now I've done that at hyperspeed, but how many get a feel for that? If it makes some sense to you, make some noise. And I know you're getting it there. That'd be great. And so you can do this whenever you have a limiting belief and yeah. it's a really beautiful format and it really works. Now, again, I'm not going to try and take you all through it and Sage won't do it formally because one of the great things I love about my wife also, she has so many great questions. So maybe yeah. before we take a question, share the other day, we were talking about all the questions that you ask. Yes. Like, but wait, I might mention one thing. Mm -hmm. If you've been to date with destiny, you learn there's one question you ask more than ever any other question. The reason is your brain links the most pain and most pleasure to it. So some people are always asking what's wrong with me. You know, some people are asking, why can't I do something? Um, mine was, you know, how do I make it better? Constantly making it better. Well, that's helped my life a lot, except when I was talking to people who didn't want to make it better, they felt offended, right? So I had to see the upside and downside of my questions. Yeah. Um, Sage's question has been one of the most beautiful things for her. It's always been, where's the good in this? Mm -hmm. And no matter what it is, once she can find the good in it, the pain disappears. Yeah. So that's been her base. But why don't you share some of the questions that I know you asked because you write them down the other day. We were yes, of course. Uh, well, honestly, coming into this, uh, I recognized that, you know, there's certain questions that I find helpful. I'll, uh, one is, okay, say if I'm feeling resistance or if I'm feeling stuck, I'm feeling that bound feeling. Uh, and so this is in my inner dialogue. I'd be like, okay, hon, what are, what are we missing? What might I be missing right now? And usually what I'm missing is the other's perception, the other's experience. And once again, that question, if you're, if you're asking that question without receptivity, but if there's a willingness, it's like, okay, what am I missing right now? It's like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Say if I, uh, if I walked in and Tony was really focused on something and Me focus on <laughs> so his face is, you know, he's, he's maybe less uh, emotive, emotive. And I, I mean, like a really loving, happy gesture. And I walk in and as a younger version of myself, I, I misinterpreted. I would see him in a certain state and I would think, gosh, he's upset with me. He's, he's, he's mad at me. And so at times as life went on and if I was believing that thought, then when I would see him the next time, that thought is like an overlay. It's an overlay on reality. I'm not seeing beautiful man who's walking into the kitchen and, hey, hon, hey, babe, let's have dinner. 
I'm not experiencing that because one hour earlier, if I'm believing the thought that he's upset with me. And so now I, I really just in real time, is it true is definitely an ongoing, but, and, and, and another one, a complimentary one is, okay, what are you missing? Gosh, what am I missing? You know what? I remember earlier today, Tony mentioned that his shoulder was really bothering him. What else am I missing? You know what? He's prepping for this event. He's got 10,000 people, uh, you know, for an event in a half hour. He's probably maybe a little stressed for time. Nothing to do with me. And so that question for myself, it helps me to walk in the other shoes, walk in our beloved shoes, and to see beyond the story or to see beyond the belief. Um, another one, an internal one, this is just for my own body. I'll ask myself many times a day, I'll say, okay, how can I bless my body? How can I bless my body right now? Sometimes I might have a drink of water. Uh, sometimes I might pop outside and I'll ask myself, how can I bless my body right now? Or how can I bless my being? And my being is different than my body. My being a lot of times wants to slow down. Uh, you know, wants to, uh, I might close my eyes. I call it like 60 seconds of grace. I'll just call, close my eyes and invite my awareness, my attention inward. That's nurturing for me. I might eat something, you know, if I was asking how to bless my body, it sounds crazy, but sometimes when we get going and we're, we're out here, questions invite our awareness, our attention back to ourselves. You know, Tony said something so brilliant earlier that, um, you know, that it, it's, it's rather uh, as a leader that, you know, we want to empower the other for the answers to come within them. Same with ourselves. As we ask a question with willingness, it invites our awareness and our attention. It's like we tune in, it's like tuning a radio, and then we're able to serve the circumstance. And so, uh, gosh, a few more. Uh, okay, another one. If I'm feeling uh, maybe a resistance or something inside myself, and if I'll see if Tony's maybe feeling stressed, and I'll say, okay, how can I convey my heart right now? How can I invade my, my, a, a deeper truth? And so that might be verbally, that might be in a touch, but I find myself asking, like, how can I convey my heart in this moment? Because head is always efficient. Mind sees things in absolutes and it fixes reality. It distorts reality. And so these questions are tuning us to tune back into ourselves. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of my other questions that I asked, uh, in my expressing love or fear. I know it's one that you're yes. Another one. Yes. Is, uh, so, and I'll, if I'll say, okay, am I expressing love or fear? Now that one's obvious, obvious, but not in the moment before you ask it. Yeah. And so if I ask myself, am I feeling, it's not even expressing, I'll ask myself, am I feeling fear? Fear feels like tension. Fear feels like resistance. And so if I'm feeling resistance if i'm feeling a tightness that's a hello something's going on i I have a belief an untruth that i can you know questions that i can come back home we all know what it feels like to be out in the world and you walk in your home and there's that feeling of (sighs) inquiry invites us home home inside of our heart home and back to our essence that from that place we have perception and perception is including you know perception perceives it allows it understands it wants to understand versus an opinion which is a fixed reality a judgment is a fixed reality and those are usually overlaying somebody our beloveds externally and so it is uh it's freeing it's freeing to know that oh my gosh i can shift the nightmare And by the way, life is offering all of us challenges, health challenges, life challenges, losing jobs, this, that, the other, COVID, all of the things that life is offering us, how we respond to that, how we react to that, that's each of our responsibility. That's our business. And so we can do it blindly. Feels a little clunky. (laughs) That can be painful to go through life asleep. And asleep feels like all these lenses, all these stickies over reality of, hey, beautiful man, he's prepping, 
he's doing the best he can in the moment. I'll even sometimes say, honey, do you know what? I came in 10 minutes earlier and I saw you and I thought you were stressed. And he'll be like, honey, what are you talking about? I wasn't. And I'm like, I know that. I'm sorry. It also allows us to, to tidy it up, to tidy up the space between ourselves and our beloveds. Because when we're believing a thought, you'll come to see through this process, we don't even recognize what we know what it feels like internally. We don't always see what it conveys externally to people it can be less pleasant. And so in our own relationship, it's so beautiful because it's two human beings taking responsibility. And if there's a confusion, if there's a distortion, it's, honey, do you know, I'm so sorry. I, I've just, I've been stuck in my mind right now. This is what it looks like. I've been stuck in my head right now. And I was believing this. I know it's not true. I thank you for just hearing me right now. And then I might share or he might share. And thank you for being with me in this moment. Thank you for holding space. It invokes compassion. Because it's hard to, it's not hard. As we're to, to, to connect to heart with our beloveds, when we're believing that he doesn't love me, he's not paying attention to me. He's upset with me. Why isn't he romantic? Why does he talk so loud? Sound familiar? We could flip it. By the way, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying I'm making it up right now. <laughs> I, truthfully, I've probably thought it all at some point in time. <laughs> but it's human. It's not personal. It's it's human because mind is is always offering up these beliefs uh, different than what our heart and our, our consciousness perceives, which is greater than the limitation of mind. We have, uh, I mean, listen, the questions we're talking about. Oh, here. Let's throw them up on the screen for people. If helpful. you want a quick picture, here are some of the questions. That's that, very helpful. Thank you. There you go. So, you know, what's missing in this situation? Yes. Am I defending anything in this moment? That's what's, a big one. What's the gift? What's the lesson? What's the blessing here? Yes. What's the experience? You know, what's this offering me? Yes. What, what am I resisting? And why do I feel, where do I feel tension in my body so I can let it go? Am I Thank expressing you. love or fear? Well, this is one you do a lot, honey. What quality of spirit can I invite mm -hmm. to this moment? More kindness, more love, more curiosity, more gentleness, more patience, more connectedness. Playfulness is another one. Yes, very Playfulness. So. Huge one. Because uh, that's a game changer. Being in a circumstance and it's just, you know, we, uh, life in, in our busyness can feel um, efficiency doesn't always convey, efficiency does not convey our deepest heart. And so for myself, it's like, gosh, you know, it's playfulness or I want to get curious about what's going on or sometimes it's patience, patience to be, hey, hello, you know, my, what, what, if Tony's involved in something here, I'll pop back in a half hour if I'm wanting to connect in a moment or say, honey, do you know what? I just wanted a hug. I know you're really crazy busy. I'll, I'll come back after you're done with this. That, it, it, it creates a, a, a language of love. Because through through the through our heart, we're able to express our our, our deepest needs and our wants. But it, it doesn't sound like you don't do this. Why why do you never say this? It's which is blame or defending. What are you talking about? I love you. What are you talking about? I that d defense. So defense has a quality that's really obvious. And I'll ask myself if I'm having a misunderstanding or a or feeling that disconnect with somebody in my life, I'll be like, okay, what the frick am I defending right now? Because there's always something. Something. Ego mind is so seductive and it moves so quickly. And so these questions cause us to pause. It invites our attention inward. And then what's so extraordinary, our own being, our own consciousness, so perfectly shows us the answer. From my own experience, especially when we write it down, it really assists me to answer the questions and to write out the answers. I, I want to emphasize that if you just mm -hmm. answer it verbally, you may not stay with it. Yes. But we both are journalers. We yes. both take it and write it down, force ourselves to, because when you see it on paper in front of you, it loses its power. It's no longer stuck in your head. And you don't have that circular thinking where you ask one question, then your brain asks another one, that type of thing. So yes. it really encourage you to write it down. It makes a big, big difference. And, and and one asked the last one is um, what is the good the gift the blessing in this that is always you know once again it's always hindsight that that mind is revisiting our suffering is not here now our suffering is in the story and it's about the past or a projected future and so what's the gift in this because if we're experiencing pain or suffering about something that happened in the past 
it's been my own experience that there's always such a beautiful gift. Some of the most painful, clunky, awkward, brutal circumstances in our lives have the deepest gifts, have the deepest levels of growth, the most beautiful, magnificent uh, opportunities to learn. And yet we could miss that if we don't contemplate and pause and reflect. And that's the beautiful, unbelievable power of inquiry is it causes that doesn't cause us. It invites us to reflect, to contemplate, to notice, to connect to. And from that perspective, it's so stunning. It's so stunning to revisit. Sorry, honey. No, no, I was going to say, but it only works. The reason it works so well for her and for me yes. is because you're taking responsibility for your own feelings, 100%. your own beliefs, your are own suffering. Feelings. In other words, whatever pain or frustration or upset or suffering you may have, it's like it's all internally created. We we want to say it's the outside world. You triggered me. That's yes. the new famous yes. part. You've made this not a safe, safe space. Place. You'll never be able to control the external world to be exactly how you want it to be. You'll never be safe doing that. You have to create the safety inside yourself because you want the answers. My wife is so beautiful in wanting to see what she's not seeing within herself. I try to do the same thing. And that's why we go in with the purest intent yes. to get to a deeper truth because we know that'll give us freedom and that freedom yes. allows us to love more, share more, create more, and be closer to each other and to everybody else that we love in our lives. And Tony's so beautiful saying, I'm beautiful. I don't even know that it's beautiful. I'm selfish. <laughs> I'm completely selfish. It serves me. I, I, I want to feel unbound. I want to feel freedom. free inside myself. And then life, boom, will offer something else. Hey, wow, feeling that resistance. And so it's such an unbelievable, powerful tool uh, to notice, to appreciate, and to just uproot what's clunky and what's no longer serving and to uh, transcend and to transform that through the power of inquiry. So I believe we have a, a yes. gentleman. How many of you, by the way, are now getting you know, on the service questions are the answer? Who came? How many getting the power of questions in your life? How it can change everything yeah. with a new set of questions, right? Nice. It, it's such a simple tool. It it's is. the most powerful. So um, we're already at two hours, but if you'll stay with us, we want to do one or two questions. Well, let's take one at least. Beautiful. And then, Sage, why don't you take them through the four questions or a sure. version thereof? Um, so we have Rasmus uh, Jacobson is going to join us here from Denmark. Let's give it up for Rasmus. How are you? Thank you so How much you? for letting me be here. I'm so good. I'm All so, right. my heart is pumping, but I'm trying to turn it into love and to openness. <laughs> Give him a hand. Give yes. him a hand. Let him feel you out there. And Rasmus, our heart pumping is love. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Rasmus, I understand you've only been part of us for about three weeks. I know you've not, I understand you've not been to Unleash the Power Within, so you don't have these deep experiences yet, and you're going to get them. You're just beginning this journey with us. But uh, why don't you share with Sage what has been your limiting belief or challenge? I understand that you are a musician and you're having difficulty putting it out there. Tell us a little bit about what you're dealing with, yes. what the limiting belief is, and let's see. Let's have her take you through the process. It's not only in the music aspect of my life. It's every part of my life. I feel like I put a, a clog on myself and uh, I'm not, I, I don't express myself the way I want to. I don't say the things I believe i don't tell people about the things that i uh, do in my life the things that i'm working on my body my mental state i think um yeah. somewhere deep down, i'm 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 scared of failing or saying something and then getting proven wrong or them telling me uh something is wrong with what i'm doing yes yes so one one quick thing i want to mention that i have sage yes. take you through it for everyone we all, the brain, not your heart, yes. not your mind, not your soul, not your soul and your heart spirit, I should say, but the mind, mind or the brain tends to do three things you should all jot down. We all distort, our brains delete, and we generalize. Yes. And what that does is it disconnects us from reality. And when you're no longer part of reality, it's hard to change your life. So a distortion is... Um, when you take something and make it worse than it is, or you make it, you know, uh, if you delete something, in other words... In order to be really angry, you have to delete all the things you can be happy about. There's so much if you just stopped and look around. Yeah. I have my health. I have friends. I have whatever. So we delete things. We delete our, our relationship. Well, yeah. you always do that. That's the third thing we do. We yeah. generalize. Absolutely. So we distort, we delete, and we generalize. And I say we, the brain does, the mind does. 
The heart, soul, and spirit it does not. It's such a much broader perspective. And almost always you're in your head when you're not making progress. And it's because you're distorting, deleting, and generalizing. So for example, you just generalized and distorted and deleted about your whole life is like this and you don't express it anywhere. And it's just, that's just not true. But I'm yeah. not going to tell you that. We'll take you through a process so you get that. But when you believe it, it's true. Because that's whatever you believe, you focus on it, you find it, you reinforce it, you find more examples, more legs of that you don't express yourself or you don't follow through or you don't say what's in your heart. And then pretty soon that belief gets in the way. You can't see life anymore. You're seeing it through this filter that isn't real. Yeah. So this process of these three questions or four questions turn around is a way of unearthing that and then replacing the old limiting belief with something new. So just everyone yeah. remember, you distort, delete, and generalize. And the way you get free is you stop distorting, you stop deleting, you stop generalizing. You open the filter and see and experience more of life. Okay. And and Rasmus, is it true, uh, I believe when I read your Facebook post, that uh, maybe this might not be a, the accurate statement or exact statement, but that you had a, a deep need to be liked by everybody? Is that Was that your own language? I think that I feel deep inside of myself that I have to get accepted by people, but deep down, it's the self acceptance that I lack. It's not, yes, and I yes. try to seek it from other people. And every time I get a proof of something, I feel it, a spark inside of me and my self acceptance, like falsely yes. getting better, but it's not getting better. Yes. It's like Tina, it's the exact same pattern that Tina had, mm, just different exactly. language, different story, right? Same thing. I related right. very She's much not to her, it to yourself. Yeah. So for a moment when someone else does it, you might feel the sensation, but it doesn't last because then your mind comes in and cancels it with some distortion, yeah. deletion, or generalization about yourself. Okay. One of the gifts of the inquiry process, uh, Rasmus, for my own self is we're able to perceive reality rather than wanting reality to be a certain way. It's my own experience that some people like me, some people don't. I, I might, you know, some people, we're both, you know, there's some go out, Rick and Robin, hey, I relate to him. Hey, you know what, Paige, she, what's she talking about? Or some people might be like, hey, I really resonate. So that's just like your own, think of your own, listening to this, you know, that your own life, do you like, does mine like and accept everyone? Or is it more accurate that your experiences, I, I feel good, or, or accept, yeah, I accept here, where we're feeling resistance, acceptance, or that that uh, lack of acceptance, that's a judgment. That's an opportunity to go deeper, like just like we're doing here now. Rasmus can circumstance. I'm having trouble hearing one. you. I'm not sure if it's my, or if it's oh, your no microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, you, yeah. So, Rasmus, can you think of a circumstance uh, with an individual where you didn't feel accepted or you didn't feel liked? Yes. Um, okay. So, explain that to us. A specific, give us the context because we're going to anchor in a specific situation. Um, when I went to high school, I didn't do very well. I was addicted to all sorts of things and I didn't have any good grades and I lost the motivation to go to school. But my dad wanted me to go and he said that I had to get good grades and he didn't understand that I wasn't motivated or willing to do my best. And I have been told many times that the the only thing I have to do is do my best. Mm -hmm. So what I hear from you, tell me if this would be an accurate statement, because we want, uh, in order for this to be most effective, the power of inquiry is you identify a statement, you identify a thought. So my dad didn't understand that I was doing my best. Would that yeah. be accurate? Okay. Yeah. So my dad, so that is, so if we're working on it, the belief we're working on is my dad didn't understand that I was doing my best. And also... So Rasmus, you, also, maybe that he didn't or don't understand what I want to do, that I want to do other things that I'm passionate about and not the things that he wants me to do or mm -hmm. wants himself to do. Yes. Yes. So my dad didn't understand that I was doing my best 
or, uh, you know, the other things that I, or understand the other things that I was wanting to work on. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So Rasmus, just in this moment, go back to that. Can you close your eyes? Just for a moment and go back to that situation. Where are you? Where are you? Are you at home? Are you at school? Where was the interaction, the specific situation that you did, that you felt that your dad uh, didn't understand that you were doing your best? Where? At home. Okay. Can you explain to us what it looks like? Whereabouts at home? Uh, in our living room after we ate dinner together. Okay. So we're all with Rasmus right now. Can you see Rasmus at his home? In his living room, in your mind's eye, he just had dinner. Okay. And your dad came in and what? Um, I I think I was trying to express how I was not feeling well uh, in high school, how I wasn't um, yeah, yes. pursuing what I wanted. And then maybe I would like to drop out or do something else. And I was just not feeling fulfilled. Okay, beautiful. So be there now in that circumstance, just after you had dinner with your father, your dad doesn't understand that I'm doing my best. Is it true? You, is it true that he doesn't understand it or is it true that, that he doesn't, it's not true? that he didn't, that he didn't, pardon me? It's not true? It, it's not true that I didn't do my best. No. Uh, okay. That's beautiful. But was it, is it true Sorry. that your dad didn't understand? Yes, that's true. Yes. Okay. So it's true. Yes. And if I were going to add, could that be a misinterpretation or misperception on your part? Do you know yes. everything you could possibly know about what your father knew about you and what he believed would support you best? Do you have all the possible information to know exactly what that means? I don't. Mm. that's good and so let's stay here now in that situation uh, Rasmus I'm going to ask you once again my dad doesn't understand I was doing my best can you absolutely Rasmus know that it's true that your dad didn't understand that you were doing your best I can't Mm. so no the first two questions are a a one response. It's either S, yes, or no. So no. So Rasmus, how do you react? How do you react when you believe the thought, my dad didn't understand I was doing my best? How do you react? What emotions arise? I felt frustrated. I felt not understood. Mm -hmm. I felt like he was... um, telling me to do something different than what I felt inside of me. So I also felt confusion within myself yeah. and yes. anger. Yes. A lot of anger. Yeah. And and how did that anger express? Notice how to, what did your face look like? What did your tone of voice look like in that circumstance when you believe the thought my dad didn't understand I was doing my best. I would get more and more frustrated until I would e- either cry or I would yell at him. Yell at him. Walk yes. out of the room. Hmm. Yes. Did that, uh, does the statement, does the belief, my dad doesn't understand I was doing my best, does that thought bring you stress or peace? Stress. Yes. What images do you see past or future when you believe the thought, my dad doesn't understand or didn't understand I was doing my best? Um, well, before I, I just did what I wanted to do and what, I, what made me happy. But when I mm-hmm. believed that he knew or he would decide what was best for me. I I think I started to do what 
he, what I think he wants me to do or think that other people want me to do. Mm. Yeah. And so I just want to, to reflect back to you. When you believe the thought that my dad didn't understand I was doing my best, you feel frustrated, you felt not understood, you felt confused within yourself, you felt anger, a lot of anger, you would cry and yell at your father, you'd walk out of the room feeling stressed, and you started to do what you thought he wanted, you thought he wanted you to do, rather than what your own deepest heart wanted to do. Rasmus, who would you be in that exact circumstance I'm asking one question. after you I'm asking yes of question. course please just one more question please. is that how you want to feel no do you want to Certainly continue not. to feel that way no, no absolutely not is it a burden to feel that way yep does it carry yes. over to other relationships in your life that same pattern now yes so it's more than just your father isn't it yeah it is it's yes. everything yes yeah okay yes. all right let's continue yes so staying in that same circumstance, Rasmus, and once again, this is not the full inquiry process. We are going to post afterwards. If you want to go deeper in this, this is just a shortened version. But Rasmus, close your eyes. Connecting in that moment after you ate dinner, your your father is there. Are you sitting down? Uh, yeah. Are you at the kitchen table there? Yes. Is he sitting down or is he, in a, is he, is he standing? Where is he? Uh, we are sitting with... My mom, uh, my dad, Beautiful. and my sister. Beautiful. So as you sit with your family and specifically with your father, Rasmus, who would you be without the thought, my father doesn't understand me? In that situation, would, who would you be without that thought? I would love my father so much more. I would. Huh. I would be... Myself, I would do the things that I wanted without thinking about what my father thinks, just that I hope and that, that I believe that he will be proud of me, that he will love mm -hmm. me, and that he that he really doesn't expect all the things that I believe of me. Yes. How would that feel? What would you feel if I that was feel, all true? If that... it, it feels amazing right now because I'd, I think <laughs> I believe it. Yes. Good. And so what other emotions would you experience? Uh, who would you be without the thought, my father doesn't understand, I'm doing my best? What else would you feel? You never had that thought, ever. I would feel much more content in myself. I would feel way more confident in myself, not constantly asking myself the question of what does he think of me or what does someone else think of me? Right. Yes. I would be way happier. I would be more compassionate mm -hmm. towards myself, more loving towards myself. So without the thought, just notice this is your own language. I would feel amazing. I would not worry about what people think. I'd be happy. I'd be more compassionate towards myself. Would you be more compassionate towards your father? Definitely. Yes. So you'd be more compassionate, happy, feeling amazing without the thought, my dad doesn't understand me. So let's go to the next. Can we put it up there on the screen for the turnarounds? And can we write the original statement, please? Who's ever doing that? The turnaround, my dad doesn't understand me. Can we have that on the screen? The original statement just helps once again to anchor it for everybody that's going to be doing this at home. I find it ever. So we're doing this in real time, but you would actually write this out yourself. So you'd have, we're just that we have a, a remarkable team. Thank you guys for capturing this. Uh, so the belief we're working on is my dad didn't understand I was doing my best. Let's just, that's the statement we're actually uh, working on. So let's drop the other for this time, just for the simplicity and the effectiveness of the turnaround. My dad didn't understand I was doing my best. Rasmus, can you find a turnaround, an opposite to that statement? 
my dad is proud of everything I'm doing. He's he loves mm. me for everything that I do, for everything mm. that I am. He loves me yeah. without me having to do anything to gain his love. Mm. Or his so approval. would that be yes, yes, beautiful. So would that uh, would you find a, an um, a, an additional and uh, your exact words are the reverse? My dad does understand that yeah. I'm doing my best. <laughs> How else? Give us a couple examples uh, that your dad does in, in that situation uh, understand that you're doing your best. Give us an example. That's where we're building the legs now, right? Yes, so the yeah. architecture. What's, a, what's an example right now that if you really focused on it could show you that my dad does understand that I'm trying to give my best. He's or he does trying. or he is proud of me. He's trying, He's trying so what? hard. He's trying so hard to communicate better with me and understand me. Um, we have trouble understanding each other. Um, and he tries so hard. And that's really love that comes from him. And I can feel it from him that he wants mm. to to know what what it is that I'm dealing with. Beautiful. I have another, once again, we're just trying these on. Katie always says, you know, you try it on like a pair of shoes. So I have another uh, turnaround. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. So rather than my dad didn't understand I was doing my best, another opposite, because we're turning these around, okay, is I don't understand that my dad was doing his best. That's beautiful. Is that true? Yeah. Can you have references to know that's true? Yeah, that's that's very true. And in in that exact circumstance, can you share one or two circumstances how you didn't understand that your father was doing his best? I I didn't have any understanding of him doing his best because I was so busy. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was so busy thinking about the ways that he made me feel um, yeah. that I didn't think about why he would say the things he want, uh, wanted. And I, I've since then also learned more about his past and how he was brought up and all this stuff. And I have gained more compassion towards him and more acceptance. And I'm definitely getting closer right now right right now here right now it's so yeah. beautiful what one, one of the most powerful gifts of this process is it obliterates blame and it puts the not the blame but the responsibility back on us that's yeah. what we can affect that's what we can change and we can tidy up and be so connected to our fathers to your daddy it's so beautiful i oh, no, please go ahead no please honey and can you see how other people you've not taken the time to figure out what they were going through or they were attempting to do in their life and you thought they were judging you just like your dad not knowing what they were going through themselves you just watch tina judging herself constantly you'd mm -hmm. probably have seen her when she's really focusing on growing her face and so forth, you might think she was rejecting you or not liking you or not happy with you if you were in her presence before her transformation back to her true self. But the truth is, have you ever taken the time? Do you really take the time when you're thinking people are judging you to see if they're judging themselves or where there has nothing to do with you? Have you taken the time? Because if you've not, then you see this is not just a pattern around your father. This is the pattern that can obliterate all the pain and limitations or a good portion of them anyway that you experience around this pattern. Yes. Because it isn't yes. just your dad. And it was before your dad. And it'll mm -hmm. be after your dad until you come to the deeper truth. What is the deeper truth? What is the ultimate truth? My soul now knows what? That I am worthy as I am. Yes. That I... That's what we want. And that I only need my, my own approval. Yes. Tell me three ways you know that's true. Give me three pieces of evidence how you know that's true. How do you know that's true? That I only need my own approval. My soul knows that I'm worth as I... 
Oh, can you say that again? Tell me three ways you know that statement is true. My soul knows that I'm worthy as I am. I only need my own mm. approval. Give me three ways you know that's true. Because when I give myself approval, I feel good for permanent time. And when I yes. take others' approval, I only feel it for a small amount of time. And then right. anxiety or stuff comes back. That's right. Yeah. Give me a hand for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Give me another way you know it's true. My soul um, knows it's true that I'm worthy as I am. I only need my own approval. What's another way you know, another reason, another way you know that that is absolutely true? Kind of freezing right now. Well, this is, this um, is good because this is where you're making new mm. connections in your brain. We're locking in a deeper truth now. We're not just getting rid right. of the old. I'm going to close my eyes and can you say the question again? Yes, of course. Yes. Tell me, how do you know your soul is worthy as you are, that you only need your own approval? What's another way, reason why you know that's true? Because every human is beautiful and I'm one yes. of them. I'm, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's absolutely true. And give me one more reason, you know, my soul knows that I'm worthy as I am, but I only need my own approval. One more reason. When I give myself approval, I can love so much more. I can give other people so much more yes. love and appreciation. And what, what happens when you love and appreciate other people? How do they tend to respond to you? As opposed to yelling they, at them or being angry. <laughs> they give it back. They... And I feel yes. great. Wow. Win, 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 win. Mm. <laughs> Is this, how much would this new belief change your whole life? Not just your relationship with your father. Would change What could you everything. do if you operated from this new belief? What could you do or experience in life? I could stop thinking about what others think of me and start doing the things that I'm scared of doing start pursuing the things that I want to do and I'm holding myself back from. And if you do that, how will your life turn out? How will your life, what will your life experience be like if you do that on a regular basis? Not perfectly, but you remind yourself, you come back to the truth. It's not perfect. It's just so you start to get hooked and then you go, no, 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 wait a second. I'm worthy as I am. I lean in my own approval because When I get my approval from other people, it's not permanent, it's short lived, it comes back. And I'm a human, and all humans are beautiful. I'm one of them. And when I give myself approval, I love so much more. I give love, I, I appreciate more. And when I love other people, I'm not fearful. Let me go for what I want. What would that do to your whole life? It would make it possible to do all the things that I'm talking about, all my dreams. Um, Everything, if I will be aligned with the things that I want to do, I would suddenly be able to actually pursue these things and talk freely and be more confident when I start to yes. focus on these things we're talking about. <laughs> That's <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> Give it up for him. Rasmus, this is Thank beautiful. You so much. Yes. Rasmus, we look forward to you continuing your journey, brother. You're only three weeks into this. You're going to have so many more things to stack the beauty of this. And I know you'll be going to unleash the power within. So you, you have no idea what's coming, but what a beautiful foundation. Everybody, one more. Oh, yes. And, and I also, Rasmus, I look forward to the next time that you sit with your father that you have a meal with your family and that you see him through an accurate lens, through the reality of your own words. Our team will send you, uh, you know, your own language because it was so rich and knowing that your daddy does recognize that you do your best, recognizing that you do as well and being able to love him so clearly from that place. Uh, it's stunning when we lift the, veils the distortions away and see our beloveds for the beauty that they are god bless you rasmus you represent each and every one of us it's a privilege to be with you today thank you for your willing heart your beautiful spirit 